You're watching USA, America's favorite hit. And good evening, everybody. It's me, Bill, and you're watching Late Night on Weird Fantastic Toy Adventures. And looking over here at the chat, uh, Sue Studio was here first. Uh, Motu Joneser came in, and then All Music Fan 88. Good to see you, Jeff. Uh, Zombie Hunter 115. Thank you for coming in, sir. Radical Mom here. Uh, Joneser has put up uh, Zombie's channel. Everybody go sub to him. I went and checked. I am subbed already. Uh, figuratively speaking, is in pain tonight. I hope you get to feeling better, sir. He just had some surgery. He said he'll catch the replay, and that's fine. I hope you get better soon, man. Uh, the Mike B is here. The man is in the house. Oh, yeah. And uh, moving on down, I think that gets us all caught up. Sue Studio says make sure you hit the like button on the way in the chat tonight. Very good. Thank you, Sue Studio. And uh, thank you, everyone, for being here. Uh, as you can see, our subscriber count is at 913. Our goal is 1,000. Uh, we want to get that before the end of the year. I think if we keep going in the way that we have been, we'll hit that before then, long before then. Uh, we have a, a super chat goal for the weekend of $50. We usually do that every weekend. Uh, we're already at uh, almost... Uh, $18.49 to uh, our $50 goal. So we're 36, almost 37% uh, uh, there. So if you want to help support the channel, Super Chats will be more than welcome. And of course, you know that you get a pick from the list of anything that you want to play when you Super Chat for sure. And that's our music and fun list. And we'll do some of that later on tonight after we get through doing our uh, uh, look at DC Comics. And I want to say that Joneser has done an excellent job of, of putting that together for us. So let's bring Joneser in. What's up, everybody? It's Joneser, your favorite comic book guy. So let's do this. Hello. What's up, everybody? How are you doing? All right. Latency check. I'm going to stop talking now. I heard that you stop, but uh, did I hear you stop when you stop, or did I hear you stop when the computer said you stop? I think what happened was that I stopped talking, and it was like two or three seconds, maybe uh, three seconds of the latency. It's a little better than it was last night. It was pretty awful last night, but we did well. Batman we in the we, we weathered the storm. Um, I, it was rough on my end, and I, I want to apologize because there was a couple times it was kind of deer in the headlights looking, you know, where uh, you'd ask me something or you'd stop speaking, and I was just like, uh, huh? And, and that was just because I couldn't catch the beginning, middle, or ending of anything that was going on. 
And you experienced that yourself when you did that live stream earlier because you kind of saw what happens on my end and uh, from my end instead of what's happening on your end. And it, it, it's way different when you're when you're running the show. Right. It, it, it is. It, it, it's tough to be in the producer chair while you're the producer slash star. So I, I did get a little taste of what it's like to uh, be in the hot seat. And I am going to be putting myself in the hot seat some more going forward. Because you, know, you only get better out if you keep doing it, right? That's exactly right. And, uh, of course, I'm not the best I could be, but I, I have gotten a lot better than I was two years ago. I can tell you that. And uh, so studio is correct. Uh, tonight is the night. The time changes if you're in daylight savings time uh, places. I don't know there's a few places that they, they got rid of that. They tried to do it here in Mississippi, but that didn't, it didn't go through in time so we're, we're still doing it so so how does this work is this the spring ahead so we lose an hour mm -hmm. so at one o'clock yeah i, I think it's at it's at one o'clock it becomes 12 uh 12 midnight again no spring ahead that's at one o'clock it becomes two o'clock yeah that, that's yeah. fall at one o'clock it becomes two o'clock so you yeah, lose you lose an hour, hour of sleep you lose an hour yeah, if you have to get up at 4 o'clock to go to work, you're getting up at 3 o'clock now. Yep. Uh, it doesn't matter tonight, though, because I don't have to work tomorrow. I don't know. Do you? Do you have to go in and do any cleaning tomorrow or anything? No, I, I, I should be clear. I think uh, one of the other managers said they were going to handle the Sunday sanitization, so I get to stay home and uh, kick my feet up. Oh, that's good. Uh, and and uh, have you been sick lately, or are you are you kind of getting better? Well, my my health has been kind of an ongoing saga. We've got some problems in the guts, and we're kind of a medical mystery. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I had an end scoffy where they shoved the camera down, and while they were in there, they took like nine biopsies of different crap to see if they could find everything. Came back unremarkable. So I need a Dr. House to figure out what's wrong with me. Maybe he can have like three wrong guesses and then right before I die, he gets the right one and then we solve the case. That, that's what Jones needs right now. We need a crippled doctor. Mm. And an asshole that has like one friend. Yeah, but I mean, if he gets the right answer, who cares? You know, like I, I've had every friggin' idiot look at what's going on and they all can't come up with what's wrong with me. We don't know what's wrong with me, Bill. <laughs> oh my! Scary. Well, I hope you get to feeling better, brother. I I, I don't like it when folks are sick. Uh, my back is killing me. Uh, you're gonna see me doing this shit all night long. Just get used to it because I had to bend over and do something the other day at work, and when I stood up, I don't know. It's it, it, it's it's that old man crap, I guess. Something went, and then you know what I mean. No, but you I, know. I I hear you. When you get a certain age, your back becomes Rice Krispies, snap, crackle, pop. Mm -hmm. And it hurt. It hurts. All right. But anyway, yeah, I'm doing I had a good week, though. I mean, we got our machine back, back, back squared away, I think, uh, as good as it's going to get on one side. Now he's got to do the other side. Now, when we get both sides working, oh, boy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to town. Uh, now. Uh, before we hit the slideshow, is there anything we need to cover before we go into the slideshow? Folks, y'all want to, you know, anybody in the chat want to talk about anything real quick before we start the slideshow? Blue Sasquatch. Blue Sasquatch. Hey, man, what's happening? Good to see everybody here tonight. Uh, I, I, Jones, are, I'm going to admit something here on the air before everyone. I still hit butterflies in my stomach before this show starts. I, I get worried that nobody's going to come and watch and we're going to be here by ourselves and all that. So, yeah. What that, are my thoughts on sharks? That that never happens. There's never been one time where we've done the show and we've had no one there. And uh, so I don't worry about that kind of thing. Um Stage fright is something I've always felt as a performer. I've been a drummer in a band. I've uh, performed various you know, stages and plays and different things. And so stage fright's a thing that's always there, but it's one that it's, to me, it's an afterthought. 
if I don't think about it, it don't bother me. We just move on and we do the show. But uh, if something throws me off my game and I get that deer in the headlights thing, that's when I start uh, second guessing and looking at it in the moment. Mm. And uh, what what are, are what, what 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 are your thoughts on sharks? All right, so the uh, sharks. I don't have any use for them except maybe if they have big freaking lasers on their head. What about you, Yonder? Freaking sharks with freaking laser beams on their head. No, um, I'm a fan of the Jaws movie, the original. Um, and then every one they do after that, it just gets worse. And then when they do like shark tornadoes and like uh, mega dons, and then the movies get kind of cheesy and corny, but they're still kind of fun, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't think I want one for a pet, and I don't think I want to swim swim along one at the beach. But sharks. Ooh, there she comes. She's a man eater. Uh, all right. Uh, let's let's hit the. Uh, let's see if this is gonna work. Hey, look at there. Uh, this is our slideshow for the evening. Uh, we'll start out right here. Uh, DC Comics was founded in 1935 as National Comics Publications. The DC banner was not adopted until 1937. The DC acronym is from Detective Comics, a popular book that they, that they published at the time. And we will circle back that to that later. Uh, Jones, you've done an awesome job here. Uh, I know you wanted to, to, to kind of skim past this, but uh, na uh, National Comics became National Periodical Publications, and it really didn't change its name on paper, uh, the paperwork, until much, much later. But it became known as DC Comics because they used that logo for years and years and years and of course that's the uh the iconic dc bullet right there that's the one we remember from the uh from the 70s and the bronze age uh and uh they used that all the way up until uh, almost uh, the 2000s if i'm not mistaken and that's when they changed it they, they they've changed it two or three times and it's now uh the one that you see on the thumbnail but uh that's the one that I think that they should have kept. And I've got, I've got a little hang tag that I've had for years and years and years up here. Uh, that's that, that this is the one that uh, it's got. Uh, it, it looks, looks like it's made out of gold, but it's, this is cardboard. But that, that, that's what I always think of when I think of DC comics right there, buddy. And uh, I need to, I need to incorporate this in something. It, it, this came with uh, with some novelty product that costed fifteen dollars, and I, I kept the hang tag that came on it because it, it had that DC bullet on it. I loved it. Well, I knew you would like that logo or that version of the logo because that's the one I I remember growing up with as well. And uh, that to me, that's iconic. You know, yes. and uh, I, I don't. I've never heard anybody refer to it as uh, oh national comics or national publication. It's always been DC Comics. My lifetime, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, that's that's how it's known. That's how it became famous, and that's what it is to me. Exactly, and uh, I, a lot of people don't realize that uh, some companies do business as, but on paper, the the, the name is different, and that, that's the way it was with DC Comics. So. You know, when you see like Superman television show from the 1950s, if you look at the small print down there at the bottom, it will say uh, copyright national national periodical publications or something like that. That's what they were known as. Even Marvel was, was called something else besides Marvel until they changed their name to Marvel Comics. It was timely. They were they were timely comics before it was Marvel. Yeah, I know you didn't want to talk about Marvel, but you can't talk about comics, even DC comics, without bringing Marvel up, and that will happen a couple of times tonight. So it, it will, and, and I did want to kind of laser focus into DC and not segue into Marvel too much. But like you said, there's going to be moments where it's unavoidable, just going through the history of any comics. And. Now, before I before I read this slide out, I, I want to make something perfectly clear. Action Comics was not the first comic that DC published. Okay, 
they were already publishing de detective comics, but it hadn't had any superheroes in it. It was all policemen and detectives and uh, Slam Bradley and, and and stuff like that, you know. Uh, but when uh, when 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 Jerry when Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster came up with this idea of Superman, they shopped it out all over town, and everybody told them to go get lost uh, and and. Finally, somebody over at DC Comics said, "All right, boys, we'll, we'll take a we'll take a chance on you guys." And they were coming out with this new issue called Action Comics. Now, was Superman the only character in that? No, comic books were anthology books. They had several stories and then with several different characters, and they would rotate the covers. Superman uh, debuted in Action Comics number one, and he also appeared on the cover of number one, but he didn't appear on the cover of number two. It was a long time before he just took the cover over. And yeah, were eventually, always... eventually it was action comics to this day is all Superman. There's no other characters in it now, but you, you are correct. At the time it was uh, several different characters or stories added together. Right. And sometimes Superman wasn't even the number one story in, in in Action Comics when it first started. And I'm talking about the in the early days. You're talking 1938 here, folks. Uh, June 1938 uh, was when the debut of Action Comics number one came out. Now, was Superman the first costume superhero? That's up for debate. But he was DC Comics' first costume superhero. And the success of that comic led to the explosion of superhero comics during that time. Right. And, and there is a lot of debate on whether or not he was first. I, I consider him to be the first superhero just because once he's done it, 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 everybody did it. Whereas did somebody do it before him? Yeah, but not in a way that mattered as much as this. the chat here uh thanks for the input on sharks you're welcome there blue uh sasquatch uh getting back to our slideshow here uh as we can see here in this picture uh often considered the first superhero the success of superman put dc comics on the map the world had not seen such a story and that's true i mean this was this was a brand new idea all the tropes that you see in, in comic books and you say well superman is boring because it's just all this that no this was brand new back then he's the one that started the tropes in the first place the very right. idea of a man with superpowers was unheard of now uh i want to look at this little picture right here that's from uh superman comics not action but superman i think it was the first issue uh, of superman that came out a few years after action comics it was devoted to superman uh, we learned that uh, the, uh, that Superman could jump an eighth of a mile. He couldn't fly yet. Uh, the radio show started that. Uh, and you'll find out that the radio show started a lot of things that ended up in the comic books. We'll, I'll talk about that here in a minute. But uh, he could raise tremendous weight, so he had super strength. Uh, he was faster than a streamlined train, so he was pretty fast. Uh, uh, maybe not faster than a speeding bullet yet, but uh, he would uh, get that fast soon. Uh with the introduction of the radio program, once again, nothing less than a bursting shell could penetrate his skin. And there you see the doctor breaking the needles on him. And of course, his parents passed away and he had to learn uh, how to, uh, that, that even with great, great superpowers, you know, there's some things you just can't stop. And of course, uh, he, he, he became Superman, a champion of the oppressed, uh, physical marvel, sworn to devote his existence to helping those in need. So he was uh, severely underpowered in the beginning, and even then, he was, he was a, a, a tremendous character. Well, I think, too, in those times, there was a little bit of uh, emphasis on the realism. I mean, it already seemed pretty far-fetched enough as it was. They didn't want to go. And I mean, to have a character, too, that was uh, from another planet from way back when to look humanoid, that was probably a unique idea in itself. Oh, uh, I, I don't know. If, I, I, I went through these slides earlier, but I'm going to touch on this. 
you see that he can't fly in this. Why did he why did he start flying, you ask? Well, that was all on the Fleischer cartoons, and we'll talk about those in a minute, but they that they decided that it was easier just to have him to fly in those cartoons and to have him leaping around all over the place. And of course, one media leads into the other, and all of this ended up in the comics eventually. So to the next slide, we talk about the radio program here. Uh, and yes, it is a good radio program. As a matter of fact, even Batman used to uh, uh, guest star on Superman's radio show back in the day. Have you listened to some of those? I think you have, haven't you, Jones? Or I have, and I do believe you can find some of them even right here on YouTube. Um, another thing, you mentioned that his ability to fly was brought up in uh, other media. Well, with the Kryptonite. I believe was brought up on the radio show and was later. Yeah, uh, Bud, Bud Collier, Bud Collier had to, had to, had to take vacation uh, or he was sick. I can't remember one, one or the other. He couldn't, he couldn't come in and do the show. And they're like, well, what are we going to do? We got to do a show every week back then. Everything was done live. So uh, they, they come up with the idea of the kryptonite. And so for, for a couple of weeks there, Superman was, was trapped in a closet with kryptonite going, Oh, And uh, uh, once again, the radio show introduced the idea of him working at the Daily Planet newspaper instead of the Daily Star. Uh, and that carried over to the comics. Uh, the, the characters of uh, Perry White and uh, Jimmy Olsen uh, came from uh, directly from the radio show. They, they weren't that they didn't debut in the comics first. Uh, matter of fact, Superman's editor originally was a man by the name of George Taylor, and he worked for the Daily Star, and that uh, uh, which was based on the Toronto Star because uh, our two creators there, Siegel and Schuster, were from Cleveland, Ohio, and they they and, and they the, the but the Toronto Star was where they came up with the idea of the Daily Star. Now I don't know why the radio show called it the Daily Planet, but that when that came over to the comics later. Did you know that, Jones? Or I do now. No, I didn't. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the next slide here. Uh, Superman made his way into movies and a new form of entertainment television, starting out with the, uh, I think Kirk Allen was his name. They did uh, they did uh, radio, uh, excuse me, movie serials with him, uh, 15 chapter serials. There were two of them. The first one was called Superman, and the second one was called Adam Man versus Superman that actually had Lex Luthor in it. And uh, they have like a um a Superman versus the Martians or Superman versus the Mole Men or something like that. Okay, and, all, right, all right, you bring that up. Before the Superman television show debuted, they wanted to test it out to see if it was worthy or worthwhile or whether people would like it or not. And so uh, our man there, uh, George Reeves, as you see there with uh, with Noel Neal on his uh, arm. Uh, first appeared as Superman in a B movie uh, called Superman versus the Mole Man. That's right. And uh, Phyllis Coates played Lois Lane in that, and she played Lois Lane in the first uh, season of Superman, and then she was replaced by Noel Neal here. But uh, yeah, they and they they adapted that movie uh, uh, into a two part episode for the television show later. But uh, Superman versus the Mole Men, and the Mole Men came from underneath the earth, and they were like little people or even children, but they wore these ball caps and bald, not bald, but bald caps on their heads. They looked like they were bald headed, and they had like a big old laser gun or something. And uh, I remember it being kind of, kind of silly or kind of corny, but I also remember being very entertained by it. I also think, is that the one where when Superman goes to fly, he completely turns into a cartoon as he goes into the air? That's the, that's the Kirk Allen serials. Oh, okay. Uh, George Reeves, uh, at first they were going to try to suspend him on wires, but the wires broke and he fell and he got injured and he refused to ever do wire work again after that. And so they devised yeah. a novel method of, of his flying. It was a, a contraption that looked like a giant spoon and he would lay on it and they could, and, 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 and they could 
you know, kind of, kind of move him around, and they could even have him bank and back and forth uh, in front of a, a a screen behind him that looked like clouds going by or the cityscape or whatever. Right. The other thing that he was, he was, he was a very good gymnast, and they devised a way for him to take off on screen, so you would see him shooting up into the sky, and even his feet would go over the camera. And they uh, they had a springboard, which was like a big diving board with a spring yeah. underneath it. You know, look and like he, he would, would run and jump onto that board and spring up into the air and, and soar over the camera. And uh, he, he would also hang from a trapeze, and he would he would swing into the window so that it looked like he was he was he was coming into the window, flying into a window or something like that. So yeah, and you, uh, you touched on uh, that he would do uh, wouldn't do wire work anymore. I always found a quote of his that was pretty funny. Is he said that uh, Superman doesn't fly, Peter Pan flies, but this Superman doesn't fly. That that, that, that was because uh, all the Peter Pan uh, stage plays always had Peter Pan doing wire work to, to make him fly. And like I said, he, he tried the wire work. He fell. He hurt himself. He said he wasn't ever going to be suspended by a wire ever again. And that hurts. The wire work, not, not just falling, but wire work itself, you, you have to you have to, to, to tense your body up and hold these poses for, for long periods of time while they're setting up the equipment. And then for, for just a, a small period of time on the screen, whereas the 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 method that was devised later for him he just had to lay on this on this uh big contraption there and they just uh you know it was like a a lever and they would just lever it up and down and move it around and once he was and, and most of the time uh they reused the scenes that they had shot for that over and over and over again throughout the series but it 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 worked in my opinion right Jones it, it did what it needed to do. I mean, it kind of had the fake background, like the people pretending to drive the cars and other media, you know, where it was easy to see through. But, I mean, it was what it was, and it was what he was willing to do, and it worked for what they were doing. And we'll go to the next slide here. Ah, Bill can probably go for hours about this, how good this cartoon was. Well, this cartoon right here is the Fleischer cartoon. And it actually debuted before uh, the, the Kirk Allen uh, movie serial it debate uh, before any television show or anything. This was the first appearance of Superman outside of comic book media. And uh, they did a lot of rotoscope work in that. Uh, and people think that that's a shortcut. It's not. And as a matter of fact, uh, it was a novel idea at the time. It made the cartoons look as realistic as you could possibly get without being realistic. And uh, like I said, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the Superman uh, mythos that ended up in the comic book started out because of this movie serial. And this movie serial, especially the first few, now there, there were a few made during the war that, uh, that you might have issues with because of the politics of them. I don't, but you may. Uh, they were really novel at the time and very, very popular. And to this very day, are are very watchable. I mean, they, uh, I just love them. And and uh, like I said, the the idea of him flying was all because of this cartoon. They started out with him leaping in the cartoon, and they're like, "Look, this will be a whole lot easier if we just let him fly." You know, it it, it just just uh, you know, and 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 uh, DC Comics was like, "Oh, we don't care. We we'll make make money. You know, make money. You know." So they. They uh they, they changed that up a little bit and, and 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 powered him up just a little bit more there in the uh, cartoon there. Lyric and I uh, watched all of these, so they they are they're still good to this day, and even with a modern audience and a a, a child watching them with me, uh, they are a bit dated as far as the style of the cars and the Tommy guns going on in there. But that almost gives it its own charm, I think. Nowadays, I kind of like looking backwards at those kind of things but that's just me and and the the um the beginning of that was taken straight from the radio serial the you know you know the uh the iconic you know uh faster than a speeding bullet more powerful than a locomotive able to, able to all, all buildings in a single bound 
Yeah. Look up in the sky. It's, it's, bird. Bird. it's a plane. It's Superman. Dun, 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 yeah, that's it. And uh, uh, the, the, that whole opening there was from the uh, adapted from the radio serial. But uh, and like I said, the, the, the cartoon show, the radio serial had had a lot of influences on the comic book later. But you have to have a second superhero after you have the first. So, you know, eventually the call was made to duplicate Superman's successful new character. Okay, we got to have another superhero, you know. And, of course, Bob Kane will tell you the story about that. They asked him they, uh, if, he could, if he could make a superhero comic like Superman for them. And he said, well, how much are Sh uh, Schuster and uh, 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 Siegel making on, on that comic? And they said, well, they make about $800 a week. He said, I can make you any superhero you want for that kind of money. I can, I can make two or three of them. But back then, that was a lot of money, eight hundred dollars a week. Hell, that's a lot of money now. I think it is. Uh, thus, the creation of Batman came to be in DC's flagship book, Detective Comics. And notice, Batman's appearance is not in Detective Comics number one; it's in Detective Comics number twenty-seven. Detective Comics had been in existence before Action Comics. Like I said, it was full of nothing but detective stories and police stories and Slam Bradley and all that. And uh, several other you know characters that had been in the DC Universe, and some of them still are, debuted in Detective Comics long before Batman. But Batman was the second DC superhero, and he appeared there in Detective Comics number 27 and i think the the it was the case of the chemical syndicate if i'm not mistaken right jonesor i i believe you're correct uh i gotta i gotta giggle out of the comments here uh zombie hunter 115 says i have a question though when they said it's a bird it's a plane no it's superman why was the guy who said it's a bird so excited it's a bird <laughs> you know I'm like that's kind of funny i never thought of that i never thought about it either but you know it, I, I, I'm still confused as to why they, they, they thought a flying man could be an airplane or a bird. Uh, what else would be in the sky? Right. But I think I think a lot of that ha uh, was just for that opening of the radio show. They, they had to have something iconic like that. And it is iconic. It even carried over into the comic books. They used to joke about that in the comic books occasionally. Uh, right. The Brandon Ruth Superman movie, they had a they had a little joke about that, you know. Uh, and then, yeah. of course, Clark Kent walked in in the midst of that and cut them off. There's Johnny Sorensen. Hey, what's up, Johnny? What's going on, man? Good to see you. Johnny busy working over there on his channel, John. We're going to have to go over and catch some of that that work that he's doing over there because it's, it's it's getting on there. And uh, Gap After Dark, is he with us? Uh, hey, Gap, good yeah. to see you, says uh, Zombie Hunter 115 I'm not able to see all the chat tonight, so Jonesers helping me out a little bit with that. I'm going to try. Uh, every once in a while, my, 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 my little chat thing here stops working. Uh, hey, all, says Gap After Dark. Good to see you, man. Glad you joined us. So we got Batman out of the way. So what's next, uh, one must ask. Well, the early Batman stories were dark, taking inspiration from popular stories like The Shadow. Unlike Beware Superman. Batman, the Shadow. Yeah. Unlike Superman, Batman was given no superpowers and only had his wits, money, and combat experience to fight crime. And of course, there you can see some of the uh iconic work there that they did in that in that issue and what the batman looked like when he first appeared i think mcfarland's coming out with a first appearance batman figure here soon that will be neat i mean uh, that's one thing that that uh mcfarland superpowers line needs is just more batman because it just doesn't have enough of it so well i'm, I'm talking about in there in his seven inch line but yeah i'm pretty yeah. sure he's going to appear in the superpowers line too because you know what, what we say batman 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 and batman who laughs batman and moving on from this slide uh they introduced robin in the series to give it a more lighthearted feel they wanted to get away from the dark 
noir feeling of Batman and give him make him a little more lighthearted. So they gave him a teenage partner there, Robin. Uh, whilst, but it still maintained its dark tone because Batman operated at night, right? So that right. Well, and like some of the television. crimes were were pretty heinous, so the criminals were up to some pretty dastardly deeds. So it still tried to have that dark tone, but it wasn't afraid to get a little more lighthearted. Well, that uh, I don't know. If, I don't know what this next slide holds, but I will say this: when Doctor Frederick Workham came out with his little thing, and they came out with the comics code and all that, uh, they really lightened Batman up a lot. And one of the things that they did was they looked at what Mort Wassinger was doing over there on Superman, and they said, "Okay, let's do this with Batman. Let's have Batman have a pet. Let's have Batman have a girlfriend that's also a Bat Lady." Uh, and let and do all this stuff that, that they're doing over there in Superman. And uh, I'm gonna tell you right now, uh, when Batman got goofy, it didn't work very well for him. No, the a lot of the Batman comics, especially the ones in the 50s, Batman gets kind of lost, he's fighting aliens and doing time travel, and it, it just gets really weird, you know. Yeah, so they, 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 they had bat rockets and going into, went into space and all that, it went into other planets. Yeah, it was kind of it's goofy, he got real goofy. But uh, his villains, uh, colorful villains were introduced, taking a page from uh popular uh, comic strips like Dick Tracy. So we got Catwoman, Two-Face, Joker, and the uh, Dastardly Penguin and Riddler there. Iconic Batman villains that in any toy line should be introduced and sadly missing from our superpowers toy line is Catwoman. Yeah, or even Joker. We, we uh, I, I would love to see a new Joker toy from that line. Yeah, uh, the many superpowers had uh, Penguin and Joker, and uh, the the yeah. later Toy Biz line came out with that awful Two Face and uh, uh, halfway passing Riddler there. But no, uh, we never got Catwoman back in those either either one of those two lines. We didn't get Catwoman until much much later uh, when uh, the Batman Returns movie came out, and they produced that funky figure for that one. So, no, uh, Catwoman, Catwoman's a fun character. It, it was a new idea for the time. I mean, you got to remember this is the 40s. For there to even uh, to have a woman challenge the hero was kind of, you know, a little different. So it was. Uh, and, and there was also a little bit of sexual overtones under that because I think uh, Batman and Catwoman kind of, you know, got it on. Me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He wanted some of that. And, uh, of course, the most popular was the Joker, who was a very murderous villain and was actually killed off in his first appearance. But they they, they ran with that and brought him back. And then uh, he, uh, for a period of time, he would appear to die in every one of his appearances and mysteriously come back. Uh, and one of the things that happened uh, in the Silver Age was he actually had his own comic book called The Joker. He, and he I don't did. know if you re- I don't know if you remember that or not, but the comics code said that he always had to go back to Ark, and yeah, the the villain always has to end up uh, getting uh, uh, his his, his uh, defeated at the end, or go back to prison at the end, or whatever. So what did they do? They had Joker put his uh, secret layer, the Ha Hacienda, underneath his cell in Arkham Asylum. So at the end of every one of his comic books, he was back in Arkham Asylum again. Right. Uh, yeah, these are some really, uh, really iconic comic covers here, um, especially the one with Batman punching the Joker on the deck of cards and the one with the Joker in the alphabet soup here. Um, I was going to show off a little bit here. I got one of these covers in my possession. Um all right, let me let me let me let me big let me let me embiggen you for just a minute. Uh, I won't be I won't be able to, to comment, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want them to see that uh, as big as it possibly can be. So let me go down here and find. Okay, um, I'm gonna try to get the glare out of this. I don't know if we can do that, but I have a ah. I don't know if you can see it, but uh. The graded copy, that's the book. Um, probably one of the cooler comics in my collection. I do have another 
Batman book from that time. Um, this one is actually for sale. So if any of y'all want to mosey over to my eBay page, and if you got $350 or best offer, you can actually purchase this one. That's neat, man. If you uh, want now, now tell me, what does the 1.5 there in the corner of that slab mean? That is the grade. So this is a low grade. It would be either a poor or a, a good, I think it is, um, which is funny because a comic grade that's good, that's not good. <laughs> it says it's good, but that's not good condition. Um, I, I think it goes from uh, good to uh, very good to fine to very fine to uh, mint. You know, there might even be a fair in the middle there. I guess I. So mint is like nine or ten. It would probably be, I think, eight, five, and up. I think it's considered mint. It might even be eight and up. Um, yeah, it's tens are like unheard of. Yeah, that yeah, there's no such thing as a 10, right? Because that means it would be in perfect, pristine condition, as in never touched by human hands. There are 10s and 9.9s out there. They're just super rare and super expensive, and they, they almost never come up. A 9.8 is usually considered the top. And, and let's be honest, folks, there probably are no known copies of, of, of very many golden age issues and none of action comics number one or the data 27 that are in that kind of condition no i want to say the best numbers on those might be like it's seven eights and nines if you're lucky i don't think there's any nine eights of those i'd have to look but i'm pretty sure gilster with us tonight says zombie 10115 i got my chat back working again you see gilster in there is he is he showed up there Good to see you, Gilster. Glad you joined us tonight, man. All right, so we're going to move to the next slide. Uh, Batman also received the quote-unquote movie treatment uh, when this uh, these two serials were released. Uh, so fine, he blows our mind. Jones are 8.0. Hey, Joneser. Hey, Joneser. <laughs> And of course, Nightbot's back with us. Uh, we don't need to see that. I, I went ahead and, and, and re, 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 restarted Nightbot back up today. So he'll come in and tell us how to go to my Patreon and stuff like that. Thank you, Nightbot. Nightbot <clears throat> is a wireless worker. You should pay him better. Yeah, I, I should, but I'm not. Uh, here we have, uh, uh, what was his name? Sam Wilson. Was that the guy's name that played Batman? You know, I can't claim to know. I I struggled to get through these when I watched them. Um, th to me, they're not as good as the older Superman ones. And uh, oh, I remember there was there was one scene. There was one scene where Batman's cape went all the way over his head, and he's trying to fight the villain, and he has to get it out of the way. Uh, it, it it was. <sighs> I'll tell you what it did do. Uh, the movie serials introduced the idea of Batman having a secret headquarters called the Batcave. There you go. It, it perpetrated some good to the lore, at least. Uh, the the second the second serial that came out uh, was kind of really heinous, and, and and it's even worse to watch than the first one because it was made during World War II. And so we've got a lot of, uh, of, of Japanese racism in that. Uh, even the villain was a, you know, but, you know, it is what it is. I mean, so it's, it's a product of its time. So you have right. to think of it that way. But it, it looking at the pictures from it, I mean, we got Robin over there with, uh, with a little plastic domino mask like any kid could buy at the dime store on his face. Uh, Batman looks more like Devil Man than Batman with those devil horns on his head. Uh, but, I mean, uh, what did they have to work with back in those days? I mean, it wasn't like it is now. No, I, I, I it, it's different, and uh, the the stuff they had or the makeup isn't as good. Um, can the can the audience see the slideshow at this point, Bill? As I'm looking at the feed and I don't see it up. Oh my God, I forgot to put us back over here. I'm sorry, folks. 
Uh, I, I guess I can back that up a minute here. Uh, we, we had talked about this before we went to uh, and we looked at your comics. And then we uh, we were over here looking at this picture here. I'm sorry, folks. No, I put no, no, it back it, in the game. And, and just put the black and white serial one on you right where we were. There you are. Yeah. Uh, I want to make sure like the audience could see what we were talking about. We know what it looks like, but they, they do not. Yeah. That... that, that that was that was on me, folks. You know, it's alive. You never know what's going to happen. I got your back, my brother. I got your back. Thank you, sir. That that's why that's why I have you here. I need to pay you more than I pay you. What do I pay you, Jones? I, I work for uh, Peanuts. You know, it's all good. Yeah. You know. But anyway, like I said, you see Robin there. He's got the little domino mask on, like you uh, like. Remember when we used to play Long Ranger? You go down to the dime store and buy one of those. Had a rubber band on it. Uh, Batman looks like they they took a, a devil costume and, and adapted the horns off of that. I mean, he's got horns on his head. It, it, it is what it is. It it was what it was. Uh, low budget. Like I said, these made the 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 crappy Superman ones look like masterpieces by comparison. Actually, the Superman ones are 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 are, are art better quality in my opinion for sure even though the special effects at the time were him turning into a cartoon as he sh as he shot away i will say this on, uh in in defense of the superman serials uh and, and and doing that special effect in that that was actually a novel special effect at the time because they oh, couldn't think of a, they couldn't think of any better way to get him to fly in in the serial now, of course, the Captain Marvel serial that came out a little later, which back then, that wasn't DC Comics. That was Fawcett. They actually had a dummy on a string, and they used that as the flying. So I don't right. know if that was any better or not. So you you be the judge. If you watch these, they are available. Uh, you, you, you used to could get all of these on DVD. I don't know if you still can or not. I'm sure that somewhere, if you decide to... Uh, find alternative methods of, of watching these if you know what i mean that you can get them i want to say there's a youtube channel that's got all these they got these batman ones the captain marvel the green hornet the um captain america all these uh dick tracy all these uh serials from back in the day maybe even the flash gordon ones um mm -hmm. you can get on youtube so uh Batman also got, a, uh, we all know this, got a TV show in the 1960s. Although campy, the show was memorable. There we have uh, Burt Ward and uh, Adam West there and as in the iconic roles of Batman and Robin. Uh, I loved this TV show when I was a kid. I used to come on and reruns in the afternoon. Uh, Every afternoon, you you could watch an episode of Batman, and then uh, it, at, at another time, I think on NBC, they would show it after Saturday Night Live, and you'd have to stay up until after Saturday Night Live was over with to watch an episode of Batman. But uh, I loved them, and I still do to this very day. I have a full DVD collection of these, and uh, I don't know if you know this or not, Joneser, but uh, you know Adam West was was uh, uh, typecast. And, and had a hard time finding work after the show was, was, was completed. And one of the ways that he made money was he made personal appearances as Batman at car shows and, and uh, fair county fairs and stuff right. like that. And he even made his way to Memphis, Tennessee, cause they were having a car show at the cook convention center uh, that uh, one Saturday. And he actually came and, and appeared on studio wrestling where he faced off against the Super King Jerry Lawler uh, on Studio Wrestling and on Channel Five. Did you? Did you? Hey, I think I've shown that on here before. Have you seen that before, Jones? Or you may have. I have not. I'm not familiar with the segment or whatnot. I I did know that Adam West did have to do that and make appearances in that way. And I also knew um, George Reeves had the similar problem being typecast and finding work and had to make public appearances. And I think that both actors found it to be kind of humiliating, to be honest. Uh, that happened a lot back in the, it still happens to this very day, but not as bad as it did back then. I mean, once you were, once you played a superhero, that was it. You were that superhero forever and ever. 
Uh, some 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 actors took to it. Uh, Clayton Moore did with uh, and he became the Lone Ranger and uh, and and held that excuse me close to his heart. Some resented it. I think Adam West resented it for a long time, and he finally embraced it towards the end and uh, pretty much played himself wherever he appeared. But uh, if you ever get a chance to see that episode of Stu, it's on the it's on the YouTube, folks of studio wrestling where Batman appears on there. Uh, it's kind of funny because I think he was a little inebriated when he appeared on that show. And we'll move into the next slide here as Joneser has decided to take a break here for a minute, but, uh, the no, next super- camera issues, uh, the next, the next, uh, superhero we're going to talk about here is of course, wonder woman, uh, uh, that's Sensation Comics number one, uh, where she appeared, and there she's got her little dress on with her bustier, uh, in her golden age uh, look. There, uh, DC wasn't just a boys' club, as Wonder Woman was created to appeal to the young girls uh, by a interesting character by the name of William Molston Marston, the creator of the Lie Detector which is one of the reasons why she carries that lasso of truth around with her. And, uh, of course, so we could go on and on and on. We could have a whole episode about that guy. That cat was a weirdo. There you go. Uh, and as a matter of fact, if you've ever seen pictures of him with his quote-unquote family, he had a wife. He also had a mistress. The wife and the mistress were aware of one another because they all lived together in the same house. And I think the mistress even wore bracelets on her wrist that looked like Wonder Woman bracelets. Yeah, it, it, it's pretty clear that he drew his mistress into his comic book. And that although it originally was an idea to bring girls in as the audience, but it, it became pretty clear that this guy was perpetrating his own kinks in the artwork and the storytelling and um, that this was more... Oh, do say the dude was more uh, marketing this to uh, people that were into this bondage and stuff like that. And it, it got a little weird, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's why I said, do say we go to the next slide. We see Wonder Woman getting tied up and, 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 uh, and tortured in various ways uh, that this BDSM, a lot of this led to uh, 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 old Dr. Wordham sitting there uh, deciding that comic books were not, not exactly wholesome material for young boys. And uh, it, 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 you think this is bad, folks. The, uh, the constant themes of bondage were obvious to posters. New men and boys were the real readers. Look, you think this is bad? It gets worse. Uh, there's Wonder Woman there. She's winking at us while whatever that is right there is beating her ass with a hairbrush. Is that is that what I'm seeing? Yeah, that's a very weird comic. I think she goes into the uh, land of the children or the land of, I don't know. It's weird. And uh, Grown down land. Hold on here. Boys and girls, do you know that there's a place called grown down land? Or are you too old to remember it now? It's a place where the youngest citizens occupy the highest positions and grown-ups are allowed to enjoy the same privileges that babies have. Um, I'm just going to say this. What's old is new and what's new is old. So uh, there's nothing new under the sun. And if you think some of the weird old kinks that you see on the internet just started out wrong, They've been around for a long time, folks. Yep. People have been uh, perpetrating kinky stuff and nonsense and doing... You don't want to know what your grandparents got off to. You'll never look at Grandpapa the same. Exactly. But anyway, here we we (laughs) see uh, that uh, maybe they needed to clean those comics up just a hair. I don't know, but... uh, the golden age Wonder Woman stories were unique, let's just say. Yeah, they were weird. But of course, you know what that led to? That led to the most beautiful woman on earth playing Wonder Woman. 
and look, young Jonesy fell in love. Well, I told Jonesy, I said, well, young Bill fell in love at the same time. I, I was a huge fan of this show. Um, it I caught it obviously in uh, replays or re reruns, but uh, I will never forget when I got out of high school, I was probably 15, uh, 16 years old. So this is a perfect time for me to appreciate this artwork. Um, this show would come on about right when I get home from school. So I'd get home from school and I'd rush to get there because I had to turn on because Wonder Woman, bam, 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 bam. You know, I mean, it was just it was hot. And uh, so I'd watch this thing, and you know, some of my friends come over from school and they're not, what what are you watching this corny old shit for? And I'm like, really? You have no Look idea. Get hurt. That's why no I idea why I would watch this. You can't figure it out. You sure? <laughs> Well, uh, I'll say this, Joneser, uh, the picture that you've got there is a wonderful picture, but I'm partial to the first season costume that she wore when the show was on CBS and set during the Second World War. Uh, this costume here was the costume that she wore in the uh, later seasons when it moved to ABC and was set in modern times. Right. And uh, the reason that photo was chosen is I just wanted to get the most high quality image that I could find, and I thought it was a pretty clear picture of her. It, it is. I can see every beautitious part of her beautiful face right there. Right. And you know what? That woman still looks like that to this very day. How I, in the hell? I, and, I, agree. And, 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 I, I She's got to be what, like 70-something? Uh, she's yeah, stunning. Yeah, she's pushing, pushing 80. Pushing 80, and look. There's that's not plastic surgery that this made her look like that because she don't have that stretched out fucked up look, you know, that you get when you get plastic surgery. Her lips aren't look like uh them rubber lips that you can or the the the, the wax lips you buy at the store. She don't look like that. She looks like this picture right here that we see on the screen. Well, I don't know if you uh heard of this phenomenon, Bill, but there's a uh... Married couples where they have this thing where they call it a, a free pass or a hall pass. So you get to name one person that you can uh, have a, um extra relationship oh, yeah. with and your, and your right. spouse is supposed to be okay with it because this is the one you picked. Well, uh, guess which one mine was? You know, Carter. Yeah. And uh, even though she's in her 70s or whatever, that just tells me I've got an even better chance now than I did then. This is late night. I'm going to go ahead and, and say what Jonas said. Jonas said, I'd hit that. <laughs> you damn right. <laughs> Even still. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm right up there with you. Now, uh, this led uh, to, now, back in the Golden Age, we had a Golden Age Flash and a Golden Age Green Lantern. But uh, in the 1960s, after those characters had been gone for a little while, when superheroes kind of went away, and it went to uh, soap operas and cowboys and all that. DC Comics uh, uh, had a new editor by the name of Julie Schwartz, and his job was to bring those characters back uh, back into action again. And, and one of his ideas was, hey, if I'm going to bring the Flash back, I'm not bringing back the old Flash. I'm going to bring back my Flash, a brand new Flash. Or, or Green Lantern. I'm not going to bring back Alan Scott Green Lantern. I'm going to bring back my own Green Lantern. I'm going to call him Hal Jordan and give him a whole new costume. And I'm probably going to end up having to turn my camera off because it keeps rebooting. But anyway, uh, what I said earlier today in pre-show, and I did record a little bit of that, but I didn't. I don't think I recorded that part where we talked about this. Uh, I was going to try to release that to our members later as a special behind the scenes. But uh, so memberships are available. And if you want to see stuff like that, you know, you can join for as little as three dollars a month and see me and Jones are talking about the show before the show starts and see how we come up with our twisted ideas. But anyway, uh, people bitch and complain because the, the this is a reimagining uh, or the, the character is not the character that I remember when I was a kid. I wonder. Did the did the did the uh, back in the 1960s when they re-released Flash and Green Lantern to wonderful success? Obviously, did the people who remember the Golden Age Flash and the Golden Age Green Lantern go? But that's not Alan Scott. 
Oh, I, that's not I don't think I don't think that happened because at this point, Bill, this is 20 years past, and these people were not kids anymore. And in these days, kids uh once you weren't a kid no more, you were an adult, you weren't really reading this stuff or not not as much as of them that were at that time so i think the modern audience of the early 60s weren't even aware of these characters they thought they were brand new they probably found out later from their dad or what that's not green lantern you know well one of the things that they did do they had the flash reading flash comics and the flash comics he was reading was the old comics from the golden age but i will i will say this since you brought that up, that brings up something that, that, that comes to my mind. In the golden age, it ha- uh, most of those comics were released during the, the, the World War II, uh, the, 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 the big bang bang that happened over there in, in, in uh, Europe. And the little man with the funny mustache was trying to take over the world. Uh, our service members, who were young men, but they were grown ups loved to read those comic books back in those days and they would actually ship the comic books over there to their uh, our servicemen in action over there for them to read now uh there was a phenomena that happened after the that uh conflict was over with hey nightwing uh is he here with us uh i can't no, see he's gonna right come now. in with a bang in a minute i'm from the future oh, really? i saw the future oh, I- do we have a super chat coming? Future, and it is good. Can't wait to see that pop up above my head here. Maybe it will here in a minute. But anyway, uh, when they came back from the war, they pretty much abandoned comic books because comic books reminded them of the time they were over there. And they, there we go. Oh, wow. $5 super chat. Superpowers team. I uh, can't read what it says. Read that out. Galactic me, Guardians or Galactica Guardians. I believe you meant to say Galactic Guardians. Galactic Guardians. Very good. Uh, thank you for that uh, that that wonderful donation there, Nightwing. I appreciate it very very much. And of course, you get to pick from your, uh, the list of of our stuff when we get ready for music and fun after the slideshow is over with. And anyway, uh, they they abandoned the comic books, and that's why comic books uh, stopped with the superheroes, except for the iconic Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, who who made it through that 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 dark period. But uh, that's one of the reasons why adults weren't reading comic books, because most of the adults that were reading comic books were like, "Hi, ah, God, that just reminds me of me being over there in that horrible." place and i don't want to read them anymore and they went back to just the kids george Ballantyne says uh, to be fair at the time of the re-release most of the original writers were still involved and showed care and respect to the characters he's correct there folks that is a a true statement uh so other popular heroes were re- were later were introduced uh so we'll move to the next slide here if i can get the slideshow to progress Ah, the Justice League of America. Now, of course, there was a Justice Society earlier uh, back during uh, the Golden Age, but Julie Swartz said he didn't like the name Society. Uh, uh, he thought League was better because boys were in uh, Little League Baseball and stuff like that, so he wanted to change the name up a little bit. So Justice League of America was introduced. There we have uh, uh, Aquaman, Wonder Woman, Flash, Green Lantern, and uh, the Martian Manhunter. And, and I think that uh, in the beginning, Superman and Batman were honorary members of the Justice League. They weren't always there. But, uh, yeah, uh, so with added characters, a book called The Justice League was created. Fans believed they were getting a bargain by having multiple popular characters in one book, and its sales soared. And I've, I've told this story before, and Jones said he really didn't want to get into it too much, but you can't help but to get into it. Uh, so we had uh, the, the the publisher of Marvel Comics and the publisher of DC Comics were out uh, playing golf with one another one day. Uh, do you remember what their names were, Jones? Or? I know on the Marvel end, it was uh, Martin Goodman. And uh, from what my uh, understanding of the story was, is they were talking a little business, having a couple cocktails and putting some balls. And uh, um, 
the DC publisher. Uh, maybe you know his name. I knew the Marvel one. That was Martin Goodman. I can't he, think of his name off the top of my head, and I should because I watched uh, I watched a, a forty eight minute documentary today where it was talked about. But go ahead. Well, basically, they're talking a little business, and uh, at the time, like comics were, you know, on a low, and uh, Marvel was doing mostly uh, monsters and westerns and romances. And then the DC publisher says to him, "Well, we, we've been having luck with the superheroes. We got this new book called the Justice League, and uh, we're we're getting good sales. And uh, you know, the fans they 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 like it because they think they're getting a bargain because they're getting all these big heroes in the book for one price, and so it's." outselling the other books that we got and uh so martin goodman takes this to a guy called stan lee over at marvel and says superhero stan we need a whole bunch of superheroes you quit whatever crap you're working on right now and give me a bunch of superheroes and so it kind of was the catalyst for the the marvel age of comics you know well uh, it, it, it i'm still here i just turned the camera off you know for for a minute to try to try to uh, get rid of some of that lag there but um uh, one of the things that uh, they said, uh, I think the, the the DC guy said, hey, "Yeah, we got this Justice something or another. Well, it's a it's a it's a it's a team up book where we team up our superheroes together." And the Marvel guy comes back and grabs Stanley, which was his name at the time. He, that was before he became Stan Lee. He grabbed up Stanley. He says, "Stanley, you got to make a team up book. You got to put a team up book out there." And and he hated superheroes at the time. And of course, he grabbed Kirby up and he said, All right, we got to do a superhero team up book. And Kirby, of course, had to do it his way. So uh, we ended up with the Fantastic Four. So that's that was the, the lead in to the Marvel Age of Comics, as Joneser put it. Uh, correct, Joneser? Th that is correct. Um, for the most part, uh, there, Stan Lee will later tell the story as if. Uh, he came up with all the creative ideas and he doesn't give Kirby as much credit in his version. He, uh, it was him and his wife talking and his wife, he was about to quit. And his wife says, well, why don't you do a book your way? And that's where he says he came up with the, all the concepts of the fantastic four, but I am of the opinion. And I don't want to go down this rabbit hole too hard, but, uh, that, uh, it was more of a collaboration with uh, the Fantastic Four than it later was with him and Ditko on Spider-Man. I, I think that was more Ditko than Lee. I think it, with the Fantastic Four, it started out as a collaboration, and then uh, Kirby was just left to run with it, and Stan would just give him bullet points. Well, I'll I'll say this. I, I, I've, I've, I've seen an interview with Jack Kirby, and, and uh, I believe what Kirby said is correct. Kirby said... If I was going to do the superheroes, I was going to do them my way. And that's why the Fantastic Four ended up being a family uh, that, that basically a dysfunctional family. They've yeah, no, it, and that sounds right. And I'm sure Stan had his, uh, you know, I wanted to not have secret identities and I didn't want them to always win. And I didn't want, you know, this, that and the other his finger in the pot that, that that's for sure i agree with that but uh anyway let's move on to the next slide and try not to get oh thank you gilster gilster with a five dollar super chat new computer fund thank you sir you also get a pick from the list anything you want to play from the list when we get ready for music and fun so we got nightwing and we got the gilster uh with with uh picks from the list all right, so the idea of being so popular it actually catapulted into the Marvel Age of Comics. We've covered that, and you can see there it's Amazing Fantasy, number 15, with Spider-Man on the cover. We've got Daredevil, the man without fear, where he appeared in his yellow costume first. We have the original uh, appearance of the X-Men there in their iconic uh, black and yellow costumes. Of course, uh, they're blue on the cover there, but that they were meant to be black. And we had the Avengers, uh, Iron Man, Hulk, Thor, uh, Ant-Man, and uh, Wasp. Wasp going against Loki. And, Loki of course, uh, covering, covering up the world's greatest comic magazine back there in the back. Yeah, thank you, Gilster. There you go. Your super chat's on the screen. Uh, we see the uh, Fantastic Four back there. So, yeah, uh, we've covered that. So we go to the next slide. 
eventually a big budget movie was made taking the subject matter seriously. Uh, the result was proof that superhero movies could be successful and tell a good story that resonates with audiences other than comic books. And there we have the iconic version of Superman, in my opinion, Christopher Reeve, who looked like they lifted him straight off the cover of Action Comics and put uh, put him on the screen. Comic accurate costume, uh, looks like Superman, got the, the Superman iconic S curl and everything. They even tucked his cape into his costume correctly. It wasn't tied around his neck or anything like that. Beautiful, wonderful movie. The first two Superman movies are probably the best superhero movies ever made. Uh, don't watch the third uh, Superman movie or the fourth one. Uh, they will disappoint you greatly. I, I'm, I'm going to disagree a little bit. I liked all four of them. Uh, they do, in my opinion, the first one is a masterpiece, and then they just get progressively worse. But uh, if, if you like a little cheese or a little corn, uh, campy crap, you can watch the fourth one. I, I enjoyed it. That was the one when I was a kid that was new and I saw in the theater. So that one has a special well, place in my heart. The Saul kinds weren't involved with the fourth movie and uh, the, the canon group was, and that had a lot to do with that, in my opinion. The, pro the production value had fallen off a little bit. We can all agree there. But, but Chris Reeve wrote it, and I think he even directed it or had a hand in it. Um, it, 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 to me, it, it, it has its charm. It has its moments. Um, you can see uh, Alan from Two and a Half Men play, was it Lenny Luther in it? Yeah. Lex Luther's nephew. <laughs> That's kind of got, I don't know. It has its moments. The part four, you can see the strings. Well, they, they, the, 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 the work in that looked like the work for a television show instead of for a big budget movie. And they cut about a third of the movie out so it doesn't make any sense uh in order to find out what the real story of that was you had to go get the comic book adaptation that included all the parts that got removed from the movie i, I had a, a picture storybook of that and uh much like the star wars one me and you were talking about off air once um that pictures or parts in the book that did not make the final cut of the movie, but there were still photographs from the parts that were shot that were cut. So it was really a gem to have that as a kid because you felt like you had secret knowledge. Right. And I remember reading the comic book adaptation of that and wondering why I didn't see that when I watched the movie because it made more sense and it was, it was a better story as a result. Now, of course, I don't think the special effects were any better in what they shot and cut out, but yeah, it would be nice to see a complete version of that, but I don't think it was all the way completed before they cut it out. So it, it, we probably won't ever see that. No, but of course, I'm, sure. I'm sure the know, camp film are in a dumpster somewhere. I'm yeah. pretty sure. Uh, but moving on to the next slide, of course, all of this led to some cartoon shows that were iconic in the 1970s, starting with Super Friends there. Uh, and, and that led to the, uh, the challenge of the super friends where we got to see more super friends, uh, besides just Batman, uh, and Robin and Wonder Woman and Superman and Aquaman. We got to see Flash and Hawkman and Green Lantern. And we got the new superheroes that were created for it. Uh, uh, Samurai and, and, and Black Vulcan, who was originally going to be Black Lightning, but the creator of Black Lightning said, uh-uh, you're not doing my character on there. So they come up with a, a, a Ersatz version. And Laser Vampire Friends. Right. C Cannon were in a massive debt and on Superman 4 and Motu hence shittiness. Yes, correct. You are right there, Johnny Sorensen. Uh, but anyway, yeah. And there we got to see the super villains as well. And uh, there's uh, Lex Luthor, uh, Bizarro Number One, uh, uh, Gorilla Grodd, uh, Grundy, uh, uh, Sinestro, Cheetah, Giganta, uh, Scarecrow, Brainiac, 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 Scarecrow, 
They, they, they have the Captain Cold. Yeah, and we need all of these figures, Todd McFarlane. I mean, we 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 we're, 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 we're part of the way there with Brainiac. Uh, we need a Lex Luthor figure that looks like that Lex Luthor. We need. Uh, we got uh, we got Sinestro, so we need uh, Bizarro. That's an easy. That's an easy Superman repaint. Uh, we need Giganta, and she needs to be big. And we need Cheetah. We need girl characters in this line, man. Uh, I want to see Captain Cold. I want to see uh, Scarecrow and Toy Man too. And I guarantee you, if they do release a Toy Man, it's going to be that Toy Man. What do you think? I kind of like the little Howdy Doody doll they did in uh, later adaptations of them. You know, where he, it was creepier. It was creepy. I'll give you that. And, of course, the success of the cartoon led to an action figure line, and uh, it got most of my money, says Joneser. Har har, Joneser, but uh, you're, you're probably right on track on that one. Uh, not necessarily when I was a kid, but later on in life as I rebuilt that collection and had to buy it all over again, hell yeah, and buy stuff I never had like that Hall of Justice play set in pristine condition over there, Apache Chief, best of all, I agree with that, pretty cool, but uh, yeah, uh, th that line was special because that was the first time that we saw those superheroes produced in a toy line that was so comic accurate. I mean, you compare these figures with the Mego Pocket superheroes, and the Mego Pocket superheroes, while nice, they weren't nearly as nice as these. Look, uh, these characters look like they looked in the comic books because they used the 1982 style guide that was uh, drawn by Jose Garcia Lopez to produce the figures. So they looked just like they looked in that style guide. Even the Joker had that hammer with the J on it. Uh, now, unfortunately, the Joker character didn't come with that wonderful trench coat that you see back there. But if you want your Joker character to have a trench coat, hit up the old Cape Master over there. He makes a Joker trench coat, man. And it looks pretty awesome. And I've got one on my Joker now that's in the case behind me here that you can't see because i'm not on the screen because i've turned my camera off i'm gonna turn it back on and see if it's see if it's gonna be any better before we move the slide am i still late am i moving around kind of eh. depends on what screen i look at you on are you you're on a couple of them down here uh, well the the screen that you're seeing uh uh from from the the feed from youtube is the one that's probably gonna be the best okay so it's one of those like this is now now see what's happening now is happening now it's not what's happening then because we missed then yeah they don't understand that these are all inside jokes folks because uh he and i are behind one another about a, a few seconds sometimes even more than a few seconds and it can be frustrating but we we've learned to deal with it a little better than we did last night we are we are getting the banter or the back and forth better. That's for damn sure. I've seen this picture a million times on the internet. You picked a wonderful picture to put in here to show the line off. Uh, as you can see, uh, they not only included the iconic superheroes that they had to put in there: Superman, Batman, Robin, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, uh, Green Lantern, and Flash. But we had even more. Uh, we had the Martian Manhunter in this line. Look at Dr. Fate back there. Uh, uh, look, uh, there's a Firestorm, Plastic Man, Hulk Man. Uh, and then you got into the fourth world characters of Jack Kirby. We got Mr. Miracle. We got Orion, Dark Side. Uh, and, of course, uh, I think peeping up back there in the back, you can see Manta and uh, Steppenwolf. One of the one of the iconic things about this was uh, they allowed Jack Kirby to redesign these characters enough so that he could get royalties from these figures. And then some of the first royalties that he ever got off of any characters that he had done, because it was always work for hire, work for hire. Yeah, it, Kirby, King Kirby got did wrong. So did a lot of the greats, uh, Steve Ditko, um, 
Bill Finger, a lot of the most iconic and most creative people that put their most soul into these characters didn't get their uh, dues as far as uh, monetary compensation. And it does make me sad to, to know that. Now, this all led to uh, what could be a slideshow of its very own. Better cartoons were produced later, and it started out with uh, the Batman animated series that was done by Bruce Tim. And uh, to this very day, I think that that's probably one of the best cartoons that I've ever watched. And yes, I know that Superman came out later, but the Batman first, the first seasons of Batman are, are probably some of the best comic book adaptations of a character I've ever seen on screen. You know, Bill, um, I'm going to 1000% agree with you on that. I, I'm actually going to one up it a little bit. I think it's no question that this is the best superhero cartoon ever produced. I, I if, if you're going to name me a better one, I want to hear it. Um, and as far as uh, this being a uh, slideshow all on its own, I definitely think we should do a deep dive someday of the Batman, the animated series, cherry pick some good episodes and really dig into this. And I'd love to have our big bat fan, mass maniac, Johnny Sorensen on here with us to do that because I love talking me some Batman with Johnny, you know, it's Johnny's a absolutely, absolutely. way the more. Blood, blood has been thrown, Johnny. I see you in the chat. You're still here with us. The glove has been thrown, Johnny. We're going to have to do uh, an episode and have you on here where you and Jones and I all talk about the Batman animated series and everything that we can possibly talk about on that and make a nice little slideshow like this to go with it. But we can't do that tonight because we got more to go. Uh, movies, as the years roll on, Batman surpassing the flagship creation of Superman in popularity and sales. I mean, right now, uh, you look at the top 10 uh, comic books of DC that DC's come out with, and what do you see? You see Batman and Batman related titles all up there in the very top. Batman, 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 and Batman who laughs. Yeah, or if not Batman, then it's uh, Harley Quinn and Night Nightwing and uh, you Batman know, Joker related. Um, yeah, yeah. So Absolutely. The, uh, if you look, if you go into Barnes and Noble or you go into uh, any place that sells trade paperbacks, and you look at the Batman section and it's three rows, and you look at the Superman section, it's maybe a third of a row. You know, it's just not what it used to be. It would have been flipped had this be 50 years ago. You know, it would have been Superman's would have had the big section and Batman would have had the little one. But I think somewhere in the late 80s, it flipped and it never looked back. And Batman has been the number one uh, part of the, he's the flagship character for DC now. Whereas for years before it was Superman, no question. You know, I, I'm going to I'm going to say this now. Now, while I don't agree with this personally for myself, I understand this is the way it is with most fans who are reading these books. People tend to uh, have have a more uh, relate relation with Batman. He's more relatable to them because he has no superpowers. He has to rely upon either his him, his his physical prowess that he has achieved through his training or through his mind, uh, who, uh, which he has uh, 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 strengthened as well, knowing his detective skills and his, and his battle of wits with the others and his, his gadgets that he uses. Now, of course, I think that uh, the Batman is over relying upon his gadgets and a lot of his appearances, but uh uh, whereas in the comic books, he's not so reliant upon. You, for example, uh, I think there was an episode of Super Friends where Lex Luthor took Batman and Robin's uh, uh, utility belts away from them and like, oh, no, we're powerless without our utility belts. <laughs> I Bye. was saying the um, utility belt as kind of the uh, plot device or the uh, plot armor that Batman carries around with him. Like he just happens to have anything he needs in there. You know, Robin hand me the anti bat shark repellent. And you know, he just has whatever you need to have in the moment. It's just in there. Cause he knew how to, he knew how to pack that thing. Cause he's Batman. 
Yeah, but I think you could take Batman and put him naked in a room with uh, with the most powerful supervillain in the world, and he could probably find a way to defeat them. Well, that's because he had a lock pick hidden in his fake tooth. He planned for that. He knew. <laughs> and uh, at, 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 we're at the end of the slideshow now. Uh, today, most of DC's library is owned by the Warner Brothers or Time Warner and can be found on HBO Max or at least, well, it's now just Max. There's no HBO in it now. Uh, or leased out to other streaming services. So uh, if you want to seek out uh, DC characters, you can find them there over on the Max if you uh, cho so choose to pay for it. I don't anymore. I did at one time. But uh, yeah, uh, and they're still making movies. Uh, we were talking about that earlier tonight. Repeat what you told me because I think it needs to be said. Oh, you're going to have to be more, more specific. I cannot remember what we're talking about. Oh, I, I, I was talking about. You mean with the, um, hold on, hold on. Do you mean with the quality of the uh, movies we do now compared to the ones we did then? Or are you talking about where I think it all needs to go away? That's it right there. It all needs to go away maybe for five years. I can't believe I'm saying this because, uh, yeah, there was a time Bill and I were discussing where you were lucky to get a superhero movie. You got that uh, motorcycle Captain America, or the Spider-Man live action TV series. And, and a lot of these things are just terrible. Or David Hasselhoff is Nick Fury on USA Network or whatever you got. Uh, Roger Corman, Fantastic Four, which got like a shadow release. Or you got the uh, Captain America went straight to home video, which I actually liked. But you were lucky to get a superhero movie. You were happy to get it. Now you get so many of them in abundance, and we've had such good ones, but now they just keep popping them out one after another after another, reboot after reboot, multiverse, and it just never ends. And I do think that it needs to just go away for a little while, maybe five years, just let everything, and then maybe take a fresh approach at it, and we could actually get back to some good, stuff because now it's just uh quantity not quality uh yeah they did do a dr strange television movie back in the 1970s and that i've never that seen wasn't that, that bad I, i've never Johnny, seen that where can you find that because i i've only seen still pictures of it and maybe a clip you know, you're, you're gonna have to go to the alternative sources you may have to go to see to see that but it, it, it it's out there uh the thing is uh, I was talking to Joneser about that earlier today as well. Uh, when I was a kid back in the late 1970s, we had Spider-Man on television. We had a couple of specials with Captain America and then uh, TV movies. And, 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 and looking back at them, they were pretty awful. But back when I was a kid, that's all there was. And we liked what we got because that was all that there was to get. Uh, even when they when they brought the Incredible Hulk back and they did those two TV movies, one with Thor, which was pretty bad, and, and one with Daredevil, which was even worse. But uh, they weren't that bad when when we watched them. We're looking at them with different with a different view, a modern day view. What do you think, there, Jones? I, I think you hit the nail on the head. I loved that um, Hulk, Thor bleed over and i also like that daredevil one even though i did not appreciate their portrayal of kingpin and it, it was still fun to see daredevil um and i guess their portrayal of kingpin kind of grew on me later as i watched it back as an adult i appreciated it more for what it was the, the trial of the joneser yeah um that that was the and I love Johnny's comment the the um the Takasutu Spider Man is that the freaking uh, one where they're putting the boat motor blade by the chick's head and he's torturing people. Uh, I think he's talking about that Spider Man show that they, they that came on over in Japan where Spider Man had a race car and he had a giant robot and uh, he fought the the Red Cross gang and uh, he was. He he wasn't Peter Parker, but and he got all of his spider powers from some space alien or some shit. Uh, it, 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 it's a wild thing if you've never watched it. It's crazy. Have you ever seen the uh, the the indie, the Dollywood, or Bollywood uh, Superman? Yes, it's got Spider Girl in it, and she and she and Superman are yeah. dancing. 
Super, 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 Man, we should, I wish we could play that here. You think that would hit us? Would we get sued by the uh, Bollywood people? Yeah. <laughs> That's my luck. Everything that I ever try to show people on here, I always get an ID strike for. Hell, I got an ID strike for showing the, the opening uh, theme song to the Superman television show from the freaking 1950s, uh, and I was doing it with my action figures. And yeah, it's still on the damn list. Fuck you, YouTube. Fuck you, whoever owns the damn copyright to that. You well, I mean, it, it, is it like, a strike or is it a warning? I mean, basically, just a, if you monetize it, it, that guy gets it, pay, uh, paid. It's copyright. You can use it. Yeah, you could use it. You just can't get paid. That's right. You can use it. You just not get any money off of it. So that's why I beg for money. But look at look at what we got here. We got twenty eight dollars and forty nine cents towards our $50 goal for the weekend. So we're over 50% there. Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, so we're getting there, folks. Uh, we're, 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 we're over 50% towards our weekend goal, and we still got tomorrow to go. So uh, now we've had some super chats earlier today, Joneser. Uh, so that means that uh, the folks who super chatted, and that would be who? Uh, Nightwing and Gilster, right? I believe they get, so. They get to pick there from the list. And I also want to thank the supporters that we've had from for, for the last uh, week, uh, last week and from uh, yesterday. We did a show last night, a special up all night. Hey, Lack Sivrak, what's going on, my friend? My, my rock truck driving friend in the frozen north of Alaska. Who uh, showed us uh, just uh, showed me some pictures of just another day at work just the other day? Uh, what's the character that had the superpower when he saw red? He loses his power. Do you know what he's talking about there, Jones? You know, it's not ringing any bells. Um, and that's kind of I'm supposed to be the comic book guy. I'm supposed to know this stuff, but uh, there's so many characters and things. And once you get past the mid '90s, you really start losing me quick anyway. <laughs> You know, you know uh, uh, I do know that uh, that Martian Manhunter, his 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 weakness was fire. Whenever fire would be around, he he would yeah. he would lose all of his powers. Yeah, or he uh, would just become so scared he couldn't act. Yeah, and and there was a there was a, a reasoning behind that. His 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 whole race had been destroyed by fire or some shit right. like that. Right. Yeah, uh, he, it was supposed to be more of a mental uh, problem for him. Than it was a physical one. Oh, I like the addiction problem that he got in the later Justice League comic books where he was addicted to Oreo cookies and they made him high. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I never knew that. What's up, Lax Sivrak? Anyway, I was thinking our supporters here, Robert's Infinite Realms, Radical Mom, Gilster 37, Susudio, The Melvore, I Like Salt, Deborah Poe, B Mr. Benny, uh, the Radical Toys, Mike P, and Figuratively Speaking, who have all supported us from last week and last night. So uh, we're going to uh, add to that list. If you support me, I will put you on that list and give you a shout out. We've got music and fun. So Nightwing and Gilster, uh, you get to pick anything you want off that list. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Joneser, is there anything on there you want to play to get us all started for music and fun? It doesn't matter to me. Um, I like that Adventures of Superman one. All right. Well, we'll play Adventures of Superman real quick. Let me let me go over here and, and cue that up real quick for us so that we can watch that one real quick. And I made a slight change to that. Just a slight. I, I didn't I didn't I haven't changed the background music to the MIDI music yet, but I'm gonna do that to try to avoid the strikes. But uh, let's let's see, let's look let's, let's watch that real quick while our, our guys Try to pick out what they want from the list. The Adventures of
absolutely Superman, he said. And uh, did you see the little bitty change that I made to that, Jones? Or I didn't know. Oh, yeah, the ending with Clark Kent in the hat. I put the I, yeah, I put the Clark the the hat that I uh, painted today on Clark Kent and put him in there. Yeah, because he had the hat on in the old George Reeves one, and and that was bugging me that I didn't have a hat ready for it when I made the video. Uh, she wants a drunken sailor. All right, so uh, uh, Nightwing gets drunk in Sailor, so I'm going to go ahead and, and cue that up in the studio. Uh, by the way, folks, you don't have to super chat me to pick from the list. I'm just saying, you know, you can you can you can uh, suggest anything you want, and we'll we'll consider that. But uh, absolutely, if you super chat, you get to pick anything you want. So let me go over here to the uh, video list and let's cue up that drunken sailor. And make sure I got adventures turn, turned off before I do that. And uh, here we go, folks. Uh, drunken sailor and and lack. You've been more than generous for for us on this show with that uh, big donation that you made. You get to pick too anything you want. Ready, two, three. What do we do with a drunken sailor? What do we do with a drunken sailor? What do we do with a drunken sailor?
And we're back, and we played uh, Drunken Sailor, and we played Sally Brown because Lack said that's what Gilster wanted. I don't know if you wanted that or not, Gilster, but that's what he said. And we got Rolando Flores joining us tonight. Good to see you there, Rolando. Does Sally smell like fish merman? I don't know. I know she's a she's a fine young lady. She chews tobacco. High Malata, if you know what that means. You know what hey, hey, we all them go. Golden Go. You know what that song was, uh, what they did, uh, those sea shanties were for? They were for the sailors to sing while they were working. And the Sally Brown song was the song that they sang when they were hoisting that mainsail. Makes sense. Be sure to attack the lack button for Bill and Jones or thank you, Lax. They're right. Yeah, hit that like button for me. I want to need the lax and I need uh super chat is and I need folks to come in and comment. And why is it always just Johnny Sorensen and Boba Hicks coming in the comments after the show's over with? I don't understand. We need more comments. Tell us what you would like me to do on the show. Give Jones and I some ideas on what you want to see on future shows. Uh, tell me what uh, songs that I can do. Like uh, Sue Studio said, I need to do green sleeves. And I've got a, a pretty good version of that that I might uh, do. And I might have someone other than t singing it. Uh, I love the sea shanties. Uh, I know you know I love the, the sea shanties. I like lots of Celtic music. I like bagpipes. Sure. What do you like there, Jones? Or you like all that head banging stuff, don't you? I, I like a big variety of music, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, a lot of that head banging stuff, mostly the 70s, 80s rock or heavy metal from that time, the 90s. A little further after that, you start losing me. But I also like like the... 40s and 50s country music you know 60s country music i like uh 90s rap i like jazz i like frank sinatra i mean and there's very little i don't like anything modern you'd start to lose me pretty quick but i, I have a wide range i love me some elvis slack to chuck berry that's the good stuff you know i mean led zeppelin i, I could listen to the pink floyd i could listen to that all day when the jenny Tony, yeah uh, did I miss a Doc Savage episode from you, Bill? That's a long, long time ago. You're going back to last year uh, or earlier, back when uh, when uh, uh, Largo was with me. Uh, Largo and I worked on a, a, a deep dive on uh, Doc Savage back then, so you'll have to get in the uh, back catalog. Hey, look at here. Joker in the house says... I'm trying to figure out if this bill is the same one from Weird Fantastic Toy Adventures. Yes, I am. This is Weird Fantastic Toy Adventures. Good to see you, Joker in the house. Uh, New Irish Express takes no prisoners, no video game, goes uncommented. And uh, Lack says, dang, I'll have to catch a rewatch on the Doc Savage. Oh, please do. Any of these live streams are worth rewatching just for the, the, the content. Uh, I would say nowadays, 90% of my content happens live right here on these live streams. Uh, of course, uh, you, you can fast forward through the live streams when you don't want to see like me and Jones are just bullshitting. But, you know, there, there's, there's, there's stuff to be had. And those of you who came in late, you missed our deep dive on DC Comics. You need to go back and watch the uh, rewatch later. Thank you, Lack. He says, I always catch the rewatches. And sometimes he has to because he's working hard. And he says he's headed back to the mothership. So he's going he's gonna to have a, a, a couple of weeks off there before he has to go back. Love classical bagpipes and, Celt and Celtic music, says Gilster. Uh, the bullshitting part is my favorite part, says Lack. Well, it's ours, too. But, I mean, there, there's some content to be had in between all of that. Uh, speaking of bagpipe music. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, and play Shipping Up to Eternia for everybody. That one gets me too, and it shouldn't. Okay, they say that I'm that I'm, that I'm sampling music from uh, the, the Dreadnoughts live, but that's not uh, not Dreadnoughts. Who the, the Drop Dead Murphy, Drop Drop Kick Murphy's Flogging Molly. Say that again. 
flogging Molly. I think that's what gets you. Oh, oh well, yeah, yeah. The the uh, the dreadnoughts over there on, on on Sally Brown does get me, but they're also getting me for shipping up to Boston because they say that I'm sampling music from the live version of that when I'm not. I'm ship, I'm sampling the music from Mia Asano and uh, and Ali the Piper doing it, and that shouldn't get me. The real bill from Will Fantastic Toy Major does not wear glasses. Really? Okay. Uh, that's a new one on me. I've always worn glasses ever since I went in the military, and they said that I didn't have 20-20 vision. I couldn't be a driver of tanks, so I had to become a chemical operations soldier, 54 Bravo. I'll be doing an unboxing live on the 12th or 13th. I have a massive amount of packages. I can't wait to see that, Lack. And uh, Rolando, put Lack's uh, 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 link up I'm there so folks can run over there and subscribe to him. Thank you, Jones. Meantime, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to queue up chipping up to attorney up for everybody since we want to hear some bagpipe music. And there's some bagpipe music in that for damn sure. All right, there got it queued up. Uh, so the next thing we got here is gonna be some shipping up to attorney of folks. Enjoy. And we're back, and uh, I'm going to put the music list up for everybody so you can pick something from the music list if you want to. Uh, subscribe to these folks if you haven't already, says the Joneser. Thank you there, Joneser. I appreciate that. And everybody that's in here that's got a channel, we'll, we'll get you subscribed uh, uh, if we can, and we'll put your links up on the screen. It'll be between Joneser there and, uh, and my other wrenches to help me out there. Appreciate that. Everybody who joined me today. Uh, thank you for coming in. Uh, we've got more music and fun coming up. Uh, we've got uh, probably uh, about 10 more minutes of show to go. So we got time to do one or two more of these. If anybody wants anything on the list, just let me know. I know uh, we've added Joneser's uh, Dick Tracy there to the list uh, as well. Uh, we've got Instrument of War, which is a wonderful little episode uh, where Allie the Piper tells you what the story of the great Scottish bagpipe at the very end. And we got That Time Is Now with the uh, Super Friends. Uh, we'll play that here in a minute. I want to play that for myself. I've uh, been working on a storyboard for our comic books, as uh, Lack said, right? 
uh, Lack Sivrak wants Dick Tracy episode one. All right, so we're going to do that, and we'll do uh, that time is now, and uh, we'll see uh, how it goes from there. So let's get all that queued up for everybody, and we'll get going. So Dick Tracy episode one, getting ready for that. Here we go, folks. <laughs> Okay, Mumbles, Big Boy's on his way to the Slammer. Itchy's probably at the bottom of the river. You are in the hot seat. Now, where is Flat Top? What are you talking about, Brady? I don't know no Flat Top. No point denying it, Mumbles. We got plenty of photos of the two of you together. Cooperate. Maybe get a lighter sentence. You got nothing on me. I didn't do nothing on my mother. Forget it, Sam. I'm done playing nice. Hit the lights. Sorry, Mumbles. Looks like you're in for a long night. You're giving me the dirty degree and I want my lawyer. This ends when you tell me where Flattop is. No, 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 Dick Tracy. Come in, Tracy. What do you need, Pat? I'm kind of in the middle of something here. Tracy, flat tops out on 5th and G, firing indiscriminately. Two officers and a few civilians are down. He's screaming for you. I'm on my way. Where's Tracy? He doesn't have the guts to face me. I'll kill every copper until I see he shows. He's out of control. Lost his mind. I'll have to wait for the right moment. There he is, I... Heat leg! Steady, Tracy. He's going to be out soon. Now! What? Reload? Not now! This is Tracy. Suspect is down. Repeat, suspect is down. All right, Tracy. Dispatching an ambulance. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
and we are back and everybody in the chat just uh just uh chatting away they're talking about big boy's great ass there johnny Sorensen. i see that <laughs> definitely definitely that sivarak laughing his ass off all right guys uh we're getting close to the time to go i mean it's already that time look at there time just flies tonight man and it flies when you're having fun and you know it was a good show tonight i very much enjoyed the slideshow and the audience interaction that's my favorite part is uh, chatting it away with the folks in the chat they're, they're really what the show is all about absolutely absolutely and without the chat i don't think i would i have the, the the ability to make it through a whole show you guys just, just bring it out for me thanks to everyone who super chatted tonight uh nightwing and uh gilster and everybody who who has participated in the show uh general lack sivrak thank you for joining us tonight enjoy your time back at the mothership and uh and get rested up and ready to go back to the frozen tundra uh flies when you're getting spanked by a on amazon absolutely i wish oh, she'd spank me <laughs> we saw we saw we saw some some interesting things tonight about dc comics and i appreciate the hard work that you did joneser uh do you have anything coming up there on your channel that you'd like to tell us about uh i have no idea what i'm doing next i don't exactly i'm not what you call a planner I just kind of just do things. Sounds like somebody else I know. I don't plan anything. I just do shit. And that's the way we do it here on Weird Fantastic Toy Adventures. Thank you for joining us for another late night. I'm going to be back tomorrow with a hangout on Sunday hangout at 12 noon central time. In the meantime, I hope everyone has a good journey. Special thanks to the channel supporters. Without your help, these adventures would not be possible. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's adventure, please hit like, subscribe, and share the video.